All right, so this is not necessarily a video I want to make, but I think we've got to talk about it now because the question that I've been getting time and time again over the last several weeks is, when are we going to see Gunnar Stockton? When is the Carson Beck experience over? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video because it is a very complicated question. And I'm not advocating for Georgia to bench Carson Beck for several reasons. Uh, number one, I don't think it's going to be a whole lot better if you put Gunnar Stockton in there. Um, I think it's he's a completely different quarterback. You've got to completely change the offense. Uh, with Carson Beck, It's you've got to get the ball out quickly. The offensive line is just not playing well, and Gunnar Stockton would be running for his life. Those quick tunnel screens, that not, not going to work with Gunnar Stockton, who has a little bit of a wind-up. Um, you want to use him uh, on the ground with his legs, not something you necessarily want to do with Carson Beck. It's completely different between those two. And you know, Carson's a fighter. He's not playing well, and I don't think he played as bad in Oxford as he did um, against the Texas or Florida, but 10 points is 10 points. The offense has a major issue, and it's all over the place, right? They, they've got issues everywhere, but Carson's got to play better, and I don't think Carson's the guy next year. So if you're a Georgia fan, yeah, you want to see the future. You want to see Gunnar Stockton in there. You want to see something different. But if you binge Carson Beck, we'll see how he does Tennessee uh, against the Vols. That, I think he's going to struggle a little bit. I expect Georgia's offense to struggle once again against a very talented Tennessee defense that's going to come after him. And if they're down at the half with three, six points, whatever, zero, I, I don't know what it's going to take for, for Kirby to say, you know what, it, it, it's over. I'm sorry, Carson. You were the guy. This is your team. They've rallied behind him. They have had his back from day one. And uh, that's one reason why I don't think they're going to. It, you can't do it now. You're fully in with Carson Beck this year. This is his year. If you lose to Tennessee, then season's over. The season's over. There are, there are no playoffs. And then you got to look for the future. But I don't know who Georgia's quarterback is going to be next year. I don't know if it's Gunnar Stockton. I've got some concerns about Gunnar Stockton. And, I again, I get why Georgia fans want, want to see him. They want to see something different. The offense is as bad as it's been in years, probably since 2019 or 2016. And the quarterback has turned the ball over, right? And he doesn't trust his offensive line. At least the, it, he didn't trust him last night. He doesn't trust the receivers. Again, there's a lot of issues. You can't solely point the finger at Carson Beck. Um, but Gunnar Stockton's been around now a while. He was a highly ranked kid who can run through defenses. So he brings that dual threat aspect that Georgia fans have been desperate for. They want to see a guy go out uh, and make big plays with his legs and pick up a third and eight, right, when the offense is struggling to move the ball through the air or with the running backs. You've got a, a mobile dual threat quarterback. We saw what Jalen Milrow did to LSU last night. He ran through them. He's run through Georgia. And when you watch Georgia offense, I, I know Georgia fans are just thinking, man, I, I wish we had a quarterback who could take off and run when it's not there. And he's getting pressure, but he finds a crease through the middle that he can take off for and beat defenses. They saw Jackson Dart do that when Georgia brought pressure. Uh, it was a nice scheme. It was a nice blitz to get in the backfield, but it left an opening up the middle and he took off for a big gain. And, you know, it leaves you susceptible uh, to leaving guys open. And there was another blitz uh, where he got was able to get the ball to a wide open running back, right? Because the linebacker wasn't on. The linebacker was blitzing. It's It doesn't seem like the offense is super creative. And maybe that's because they know that they can't block anyone up front right now. And they're mixing and matching too many guys. And they are banged up, but they don't have the players. That's one issue, and you can blame the coaching too. If you want to blame the whole thing on Mike Boba, that's that's up to you. You can do that. Uh, they were so much better last year, and I, I do think the legend of Brock Bowers grows by the game. I did not think Carson Beck needed elite players around him to play winning football, really good football. It looks like he, he might. It looks like he is that type of guy, but uh, it, the whole thing's not working. They're not getting pushed up front. They're not running the football. But again, it goes back to Gunnar Stockton. And I, I will share some concerns because, you know, I, I was watching him warm up yesterday and it's just warm ups, right? You, you can't take much from it. But I remember thinking before the Ole Miss game, watching the quarterbacks warm up and it wasn't pretty. And I remember thinking, maybe it's the weather, maybe it's raining out there. I'm watching from the press box, but these throws are off and it's warm ups. I mean, it, it, it didn't seem like they were clicking even prior 
to the game, but even Gunner's throws were off, and he's, he doesn't get the ball out quickly. It just seems like it's a, a slow developing style of play that he has. He can take off and run, and he, you know he's he's faster than people think, and his legs, he's got tree trunks, man. He will run through you. So I get why Georgia fans are uh, excited to see what he can bring to the table, but I don't know if he's the guy next year, and if you bench Carson Beck and play Gunnar Stockton, you have to stay there. I don't think you can go back to Carson Beck, and I don't think you can tell Carson, hey, you're our guy next year. I think if Georgia wins out and wins the national championship, which looks unlikely, but is still in play, Carson gets drafted, and he would have a, a revival of his draft stock, right, which is kind of plummeting right now, if we're all being honest. And I, I'm not sure I would give him a serious first round or second round look if I'm an NFL GM looking for a quarterback. Um, but he... If you bench him, I don't know if you can bring him back. I think you're, you're ending it all right there. You're putting it all on Gunner's shoulders, and you're doing – that would be a, a real, real bad deal for Carson Beck because he was the leader and still is. He, he's still the leader of this team, and he, he's got to rally them some way, somehow. The offensive line's got to play better against Tennessee. If, if Carson's on the ground getting crushed every time he drops back – uh, it, it's that's bad, and they had to throw 15 to 20 tunnel screens because they had to get the ball out quickly. Because if Carson Beck's dropping back for more than three seconds, he was getting lit up. He knew it. He didn't trust the offensive line. He knew that the only way they could do much of anything was get the ball out to some of their fastest guys. And he was still off target. He wasn't super accurate, and the, half of the time it got blown up. Right, Ole Miss knew it. So. I thought they'd be a little more creative, but, and they ran the screens in different ways out of different formations, right? But at some point, Ole Miss knew, they said, if, the, if this guy drops back, we're going to eat him alive. So we know he's going to try to get the ball on the perimeter and, you know, we can expect that in attack. And they did. And I, I just don't think you're going to see anything much different if you put Gunnar Stockton in there. This offense is still going to struggle. They're still going to make the same mistakes. They are what they are right now. They can't run the football. Um, they're beat up. They're not consistently catching the football, obviously. And I don't think Gunnar Stockton, who may or may not have the same arm talent. I, I think he's got a good arm. And I think he's mostly accurate, but he's not perfectly accurate. And he doesn't have elite arm strength. Neither does Carson. Um, but Gunnar can run. And Carson is somewhat mobile. He can't run like Gunnar. But I think Carson has more arm talent um, and I think he's got a quicker release, which is a big deal when the offensive line is having trouble blocking guys, right? You've got to get the ball out quickly. They don't have the weapons they need. They don't have the offensive line that I think uh, – it's not elite. And they're not playing well against I – mean, that's probably one of the best defensive fronts. But I tell you what, they would get eaten alive by South Carolina. If you're a Georgia fan, I think you're looking at Carolina saying, thank – glad they don't play those guys this year. Uh, that, w that could – really be ugly um because that defense is not one you want to mess around with and uh you know o Ole Miss was clearly the better team their defensive line I thought really won them the game with uh safe efficient quarterback play consistent quarterback play clearly the better team and Georgia's got major issues but I don't know if a new quarterback or Gunnar Stockton is going to solve those issues now if Carson Beck plays bad against Tennessee and they make a change Gunnar Stockton leads them to a win, uh, yeah, then it would be Gunnar Stockton time. But And I don't want to put this out there. I'm not trying to hate on Carson Beck. It, it's a talking point, right? It's the Sunday after their second loss of the season. They just put up 10 points. You got to talk about it. I don't want to talk about benching Carson Beck. And I, again, I don't think it's going to happen unless it really does continue to get worse and worse. And I'm not sure it's the right move. Um, cause, uh, and a lot of that does have to do with some concerns I have with Gunnar and overall – a team morale is probably not good, but I do think the, the team likes Gunner and they want Gunner to be successful and they believe that he can. And um, I, I, I don't know. They, they've got major issues. I'm not a, I'm not a coach. So I don't know how to fix them. You got to block better. You got to catch the ball better. Um, you got to be more consistent, more efficient. You can't shoot yourselves in the foot on an illegal formation on first down and back yourself up. They got to, play clean better football but we're nine ten games into the season now um they are what they are and again i don't think gunner stockton putting him in there and completely crushing everything that carson beck has left and if you bench him what i don't know what 
where you go from there. Um, I, I'd be, I would feel really, really bad for Carson. But you gotta, you gotta play better. But at the end of the day, I don't think he played as bad in Oxford as he has earlier this year. And I, I don't think he played as worse as the collective offensive line did or the receivers either. But they all gotta play better. They all gotta play better. They've got a massive challenge on their heads when Tennessee comes to town. That defense is uh, really good, and I don't think Gunnar Stockton is going to be the biggest difference in Georgia winning or losing that game. I still think they got to roll with Carson, um, and they just have to find a way to win, find a way to sneak into the playoffs, and find a way to start playing their best football. That's a big challenge. We'll see if they're up to it. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments section. I know y'all want to talk about the quarterback. I know most of y'all want to you know, I have Carson Beck long gone out of Athens, uh, but let me know in the comment session. Thanks.